these family and friends were not spontaneously mentioned, but they were important when probed in that example that I just gave. They talked to their cousin who has an apartment in their building, or if there was an immediate push factor, they are let, you know, some a leak in their house and they really had to move quickly, or some acute emergency in their home and they had to move, that's when family networks came up. But what was not important, they were not interested, racial diversity was not particularly important to them. When we would ask them about racial diversity, uh, we would categorize their responses as being um, politically correct. They would say, oh yeah, I'd like a neighborhood where there were people of different races. But that was after we asked them. And there was, it, wasn't, it wasn't like that transportation thing. Um, so, you know, they're not opposed to living in racially diverse neighborhoods, but this is not something that they're that is one of their goals. People did not mention schools. Again, when probed, we would talk about schools, but many people would say, and any of you all who do this research, um, this should, somebody should write this paper if I don't get to it first, which is um, this mantra that, you know, there are bad kids everywhere, they're all school, you know, schools are what you make of it, they're bad neighbors, there's violence in all neighborhoods. It's kind of this, const this notion that there are going to be bad things everywhere, and so they're really what you make of it. And schools was that uh, idea as well. So. Um, they weren't necessarily interested in the income mix of the neighborhood as such, and they definitely weren't interested in suburbs and suburban-like places, mostly because of the fact that these places were inaccessible by public transportation. Okay, so here are some conclusions and opening up for conversation. Uh, number one, those who utilize default options are the most in need of high-quality options. Um, number two, school and apartment choosers have different priorities than the choice architects. So that transportation thing, if you're really trying to get people to move to low poverty neighborhoods, you need to perhaps identify low poverty neighborhoods that are very near public transportation and make people aware of the fact that public transportation is there rather than much of the counseling now around opportunity moves is around either racial diversity or class income diversity. Number three, and this is the, number three and four are the more, the bigger picture things that I really want to emphasize as I move forward. The slippage between the intention slash assumptions of choice architects and choice in practice makes this a very imperfect and inefficient policy approach. So it seems to me that choice architects have in mind what they want, folks out there in the world have in mind what they want, and then the choice architects just cross their fingers and say, ooh, I hope they move where I want them to go. Or they provide a whole bunch of schools and say, ooh, I hope they go to the school that I want them to go to. And this inefficiency, to me, is unnecessary if, number four, a rights discourse would move to focusing on strengthening the default options and thus not needing to rely too heavily on people's choices and instead knowing that if the default option is a good option, people, especially the people we most need, will likely end up there. So I'll end there and open it up for questions, comments, feedback.